Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live. And tonight we have with us Rodrigo Fialiega. Did I pronounce that right? That's exactly how it's pronounced. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Rodrigo, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you very much for having me, John. Oh, it is my honor. And I'm really excited to talk to you. As I told you just before we went live, you are my first visual uh, FX person. And man, do I have a lot of questions for you. But before <laughs> we get into that, a lot of people don't really understand what does a visual effects person do when a film is done and it comes to you? What do you guys do? Well, uh, I think it's a bit, um, yeah, com complicated sometimes for the people to understand it because uh, it looks uh, that it's some kind of magic that we do, that it's your life, your, that, that they will deliver us to us the, the, the material and we do some kind of magic and then the VFX are, are just done. <laughs> and, and sometimes, people, I mean, even even people that uh, work in, in, in film production, that it's the, in the part of the production, not in the post-production, sometimes they, they don't really understand how it works and, and what, what, what times it takes and, and, the, and the effort that it takes to, to, to do stuff. Uh, because, of, of course, in the last uh, 30 years, VFX has become very uh, something very strong and, and, Prevalent. and each year it becomes more, uh, not complicated, but something more uh, achieved than something uh, more special. Um, so now at this moment, what, what VFX do is uh, basically um, all the stuff that is not shot in the in, 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 in real life, let, let's say that way. But when you want to be in the on the screen, uh, you you then generate it from from let's say from nothing. Uh, it can be just a scar. It can be just uh, re replace a scar. It can be create a monster. There's a lot of stuff in in, in VFX, and there's a lot of uh, let's say um, divisions. In, in, in BFX, uh, there's the, of course the, the, the guys that make 3D stuff, the guys that makes uh, fluids. Uh, it has become some, something very specialized at this point. What I used to do was uh, something that, that is called compositing. That is the part when they will give you all the stuff, uh, let's say the stuff what does, that, that was filmed. Uh, in the in the stage or whatever, and then the, maybe the, the the 3D guy will give you the renders of a monster, and then the guy with the fluids will give you all the the, the stuff he made, and then what my work is is to, to make it look like it's integrated in one thing and th that it looks real. Let's say okay. that was what I used to do, and then at some point, of course, uh, also supervise. Uh, the work of the of the VFX that to see that the that the 3D stuff was coming along with the, how it was shot and that kind of stuff that, that was a little the stuff I, I was doing when I when I work as a VFX. Now VFX people also like if something is shot behind the green in front of a green screen, you guys fill in the green screen. Is that true or not? Exactly. 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 That's that's also part, and, and, and that's part of the compositing. I mean, well, for example, uh, in the in the example I was saying, uh, let's say that maybe there's a, a monster that is coming behind you. Uh, you will be shot in a green screen, so we can take the green and then let the monster be there. So that will be part of my job to take out the, the screen, the green screen, and then with the renders that the three D guy will give me put the monster and, and make it look like it's really behind you. How closely do you work with the director of the film? When, when working in VFX, it depends a lot uh, because uh, it depends if it's a commercial, if it's a, if it's a movie. Um, but when I, I was working VFX, I, I usually will, will try to work a lot with the director. At, at some point, always the director will will come to you to look how it looks and, and give you feedback about how, 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 how he feels about it. Now, you being a visual uh, FX artist, uh, has there ever been a, a movie, a commercial, or any project that you worked on that uh, you requested to be on the set so you can get an idea of how to better put together the final product? 
Yes, that's that's part of what it's called the uh, VFX supervisor. It, that that's uh, the guy that in fact goes to the to the filming and will will take care of the technical part of how, how to shoot it. Uh, for example, uh, if we continue with the green screen uh, example, uh, he will say, okay, I need you to put this green screen in this part because then I will need to take it from, we don't see this part, but uh, maybe this part is okay to not have the green screen because we will not see it. Uh, maybe I need to put this little uh, black uh, pins here that will help me to track the shot if the camera is moving that kind of things uh, will make the VFX supervisor and yes I, I, I especially for commercials I, for a film I never was supervisor but uh, but for commercials I, I, I did supervising okay now I, I've had a lot of directors and actors tell me when they're doing like a, a fight scene let's take horror movies zombies okay yeah. and they're holding a knife or a sword the tip of that knife will be wrapped in green, uh, like a green screen material. And when they're shooting it, you know, it only goes so close to the person's head. They're like, they'll stop right here. And I'm like, okay, I understand the green screen, the tip of the knife, you fill it in. But what's always confused me, if a person is stabbing someone in the head in the movie, right? Or a TV show and they stop six inches short of the head, uh, even with the green uh, material around the knife, how do you guys make it look like that knife is actually touching the head and penetrating and the blood and all that? How does that, I mean, that's that blows me away. It depends a lot. Uh, there's there's a lot of, tech, I mean, I think the, the amazing thing about VFX is that it's not always the same. It depends it's always different with every project with every shot it's different because it depends a lot of how what you really want because for example in in in, in this case you are you're telling me uh uh it could be a lot of ways to do it because uh, the, the green screen of course will help you to to make it uh, uh larger the the knife of course so, so it will look then that it goes inside the head okay i didn't uh, know that and i didn't then, know that yeah okay yeah i didn't know that you can make they, it larger yeah, because for example, then what it's very used uh, for for it's called extension. Okay. So for example, if in that case you want the knife to be larger, larger, so so it will looks like it's uh, on your head. You will take that uh, real knife, and then the 3D guys will make it look make make it look like it it's part of like an extension, and then the compositing guy will make it look like it's exactly the same that it, it, it does it looks seamless wow. um but then as it goes inside for example of the head you will do or either the, uh, maybe the the blood you will put it there in, in post-production or maybe what you will do is to, to have a um, a head done for that purpose and and do it that way it depends a lot of of how exactly the, the shot is and what the director in that case really wants to to see and 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 what the vfx facility is is more used to do and what they think it's it's easier for them and better we look better for them okay now if somebody you know wants to get into vfx uh now this is you know when it comes to directing producing school is not like our uh, necessity where you have to go to school now i'm assuming when it comes to this very highly skilled job of visual effects uh where did you get where did you learn how to do it did you go to school did you someone mentor you well to be honest in in my personal case i didn't go to any school i i I was working as an assistant director in commercials, and and I, I used to work a lot uh, with a director that that used to like a lot VFX and will work in a lot of VFX um, productions. So that was the way I, I began to be interested in, in the VFX part. So what I did was just uh, learn from myself with uh, with with the with the softwares and tutorials and that kind of of, of things. Um, 
But to be honest, I think the best way is to go to school. I, I, maybe because when I when I started doing VFX about I don't know 15 years ago, there were not so many school VFX schools and that kind of things. Uh, I think now it's a, a bit more common to to to, to have VFX schools and and 3D schools and these kind of things. I I, I will recommend to to really do um, a more academic uh, yeah. studies on that because. Say so it's something sometimes very specialized, and it's it's not just knowing how the software works. That's the easy part. Uh, there's a lot of, of of physics, a lot of optics, of mathematics. Uh, also, there's also that kind of of scientific stuff that you also need to know and and and, and learn to really know what something should look like. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Now, out of all the projects that you've done VFX on. Is there, I mean, I'm looking at the list and you have quite an impressive list of VFX, like for Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, you were the digital compositor, you've done some horror, you've done a little bit of everything in some pretty popular movies. Is there yes. any project looking back that really was a challenge for you as a VFX guy? Yes, I think um, how it's called. I just forgot the the um, I forgot the name the 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 movie that Angelina Jolie directed. Uh, ah, you might you should have it in the list. Uh, of I, I forgot the name. Yeah, <laughs> the, it's okay. It's okay. But go on. What what exactly of that movie was so challenging as a VFX artist? Because the sequence I was working on, it was uh, there were there was these guys that were left alone in the in the ocean. Uh, but of course, it, it was not shot in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. It was shot in a pool. And what we needed to do was to, to recreate the ocean and the sky. And and it was it was made for ILM Industrial Light and Magic. That you know you must know this. It's yeah. the the. the of George Lucas and they are very 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 of course they are the best and they are very strict they go pixel by pixel to check everything and it was very challenging to do this, those shots because it, it, it was really complicated to the working with water is complicated and, and and the guys were moving a lot and I don't know because so, probably because of the way the production they, they shot it they not always have a uh, uh, green screen covering all the parts that to be needed to be covered. So it was a lot of uh, uh, rotoscoping, handmade, and it was it was really challenging those those shots on that on that on that movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, visual effects with the advance of technology. I mean, uh, the cost. I mean, I'm using a green screen right now behind me it's a green screen and the technology has become a lot easier to handle and it's cheaper uh as yes. well now the last yes the last uh credit that you have as a visual effects artist is 2016 and we're going to go on to what you've moved on to are you would you say you are done with the vfx part of your career and you're ready now to move on to some other stuff well, uh, I, I, to be honest, not really because I, I, I like it a lot. The VFX, of course, what I, I, I always wanted to be was was directing, and of course now now is what I'm what I'm doing. But at the end, for example, when I direct commercials, there's there are some times that uh, because of the time or the budget, I end up doing some part of the VFX or some part of the post-production uh, and even in, in the last movie that I worked that it was an, a horror movie I had to make some part of the VFX because the, the the company that was supposed to to make them they were not getting to the point of, of really uh, delivering so I had to put my hands on uh, on that part so I think I think no I think uh, I still like it and I, I will do it probably not as uh, before as part for others project or other directors but still uh for my stuff i'm just i'm just for fun sometimes just you enjoy fun, it yeah, to... you enjoy it yeah, yeah exactly and of course when when something new comes uh on this, the new software comes and stuff i always try it and, and, and see what what's going on what's, yeah. what's the new stuff uh and all the things really i, I really enjoy that part now now you're directing 
do you would you say that all the experience that you've had in post-production with visual effects has helped you immensely now being behind the camera and directing yeah definitely uh, i mean especially when there's there's of course projects that has some kind of vfx and and, and that kind of things but um i think what has has helped me the, the most is to try to to do the, the things as 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 simple as possible to 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 get to where where you want to get because um and also to make it probably easier for the post production people since you exactly. have a lot of experience there yeah i mean always in, in that part when I, of course now when i i make something that has vfx i i work with uh with another facility or vfx studio i always of course talk to them first because uh, as i told you every every vfx facility works in a different way and think uh in a different way so i always talk to them first how they will how how they see the project and then of course i will tell them my, my point of view and maybe the best way to to get there and and i think they're always uh, thankful that i can understand their, their language yeah. because it's easier to work and 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 when you are shooting it's easier for them because i know that Maybe if I put the green screen in this part and not in this part, it will be easy for for the guys later and yeah. not uh, uh, and maybe it will take them ten hours less to do the job because uh, when when I was doing those VFX and you have to work with directors or in, in projects that they really don't know what we're doing. There's there's always this saying of oh we will solve it in post doesn't matter, and then when it comes to you it's like. <laughs> Shit! What? Why? Did yeah, you, if yeah. you just have shot it this way, it will be a lot easier. But now, because you do it this way, is this is hell? <laughs> All right. So since I've been doing it, I, I've been in the other part of the fence. Now I try to help uh, when I'm in this part. So let's move on to your directing. Which? Uh, what was your directorial debut? Which movie? Which full feature movie was your directing debut? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I started uh, first, of course, directing some commercials. But when, when talking about feature films, I, I just have two, two features. Uh, it was a strange because I almost made the two of them at the same time for some strange, strange reason. One, one is uh, my first film that is, is it's mine I, I wrote it that is called ricochet mm -hmm. it's a very, very i mean ricochet uh, i'm sorry to interrupt you it has such uh acclaim and uh nominations and wins it's such a great movie congratulations on that movie by the way but go oh, on thank you because because uh i mean if, if you if you watch it it's, it's a really little movie uh, a very arty movie but but yeah it's, fortunately it's been it's doing good in in the festivals and and and, and that's really good I'm, I'm really proud of that movie because we had very little movie very little uh, money very little time and i think uh we did something something good and then just when i finished shooting that movie i i start filming this other movie that is yeah, in fact a, a, a thriller horror movie the exorcism, uh, that of, it's, the exorcism, exorcism of, of yeah. carmen fire yes yes exactly that one and but but in that case that was uh, a film that i i was uh uh is not the same my film i was i was uh, um put in the in that film by a production company uh, and it was strange because it was the other side of the film industry from doing a very little personal film and doing a, something very commercial, uh, bigger film, um, but it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I actually messaged you the other day. Uh, I wanted to watch uh, The Exorcism of Carmen Farias, yeah. but it's not yet available here in the United States. It's available in Mexico. Was that movie filmed in Mexico? Yeah, we, we shot it here in Mexico. It was just, uh, it was it was complicated because we shot them, we shot it in, wow, we were 2021 in 
2018, 19, mm -hmm. in the middle of those mm -hmm. years. But of course, then because of COVID and all this stuff, it was just delayed all this all the time, and um, it went to to theaters uh, in May. In Mexico. Yeah, in Mexico. Now I think it's in in theaters in Central and South America. I'm not sure if it's going to be in theaters in, in, in the States. I don't think so. I know I know it's going to be in, in streaming platforms. Good. Uh, and I hope that uh, maybe in some in some horror festivals it will be nice. In, in fact, it's, it's going to be in a, in a festival in, in LA that is a it's a, a film festival just for like for Mexican films. Wow. And in fact, my, my two films is, uh, is going to be there in, in that festival. That is, it's called Hola, Hola Mexico, it's called. Okay. Now, since it's going in the festivals, uh, are, is, are we to assume that uh, Carmen Farias does not have a United States distributor yet and you're still looking for a distributor in the United States for that movie? To be honest, I really don't know because the, the thing is... Uh, since I was just uh, contracted to be a director, I'm not I, I'm, I'm not part of the production company. Uh -huh. So I mean, I, I talk with the production company, but I so this is kind of things. Sometimes I don't I don't know how they sell it. Yeah. These kind of things. I know for streaming, it's already sold for a for a, a sort of uh, Latin films uh, platform that is called Pantaya. Um, but I'm not sure if it's going to be in theaters or not. I, I should ask the, the production company okay. to, to make it be okay. nice to know if it's going to be in, in theaters. It would be great. Now, Ricochet, which you said you wrote and you also directed, is a drama, okay? And then you have The Exorcism of Carmen Farias, which you came in to direct, which is a horror movie. Uh, would you consider yourself a horror fan? To be to be honest, and I, I know I should not say this in this kind of uh, no, platform, no, but... no, no, be please. <laughs> no, I, I, I just love films. I don't. Uh, I have never um, make difference between genders of kind of films. I just, I just think there's good films and films that I like and that I feel something about them and makes me think and and that that's what I at the end I like about about films the so the stuff that makes me yeah. that, that makes me that makes me feel something if it's horror if it's comedy if it's drama I really don't don't pay too much attention for, for that I, I mean there's there's some great uh, horror movies that I, I really love uh, there are some that I really don't like I think that the maybe probably the problem with with the last uh, part of, of horror films is that they they trust too much in VFX, so they forgot a lot. I think of the of what they want to say. They just mm -hmm. want to show stuff. Yeah, it's some something the same with the with these superhero movies. They, it's just uh, all the fancy. Yeah, yeah. Stuff, but, but you really don't get anything at the end. I mean, it's, they are entertaining, of course. But but yeah. when you finish it, it's like oh, okay. I, I don't remember it, the movie anymore. Exactly. For me, as a horror fan, I don't care about blood, guts, and, you know, special VFX. Give me a good story with uh, nice, good acting, a nice script, uh, the way a story is told. Thriller, horror, doesn't matter. I will choose that any day of the week over watching something just for blood and guts and special effects and all that. I want a good character story like yeah, you. Yeah, def definitely. I, I think what, what because uh, to me, at, uh, at least at the end, what horror in, in general as, as, as a gender of film, of literature, what it really is meant to be, it's to make you know and to make you feel what what you, we humans fear about and, and yeah. what we fear, what is inside of us. Uh, so, so I think good horror movies at the end, it's really about knowing yourself and about knowing your fears, about knowing what uh, you like and you don't like. I, I think that's what really good uh, horror movies uh, are about. Yeah, yep. I completely agree with and you. 
could be a lot of blood and there could be nothing blood no no blood at all it doesn't matter but but good horror movies i think it's it's just about that just about what makes you fear exactly i i completely 100 agree let's talk a little bit more about ricochet you wrote it you directed it what was your inspiration for ricochet well it it's it's uh loosely based in a real story that happened in 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 argentina uh it's something i read in the newspaper a lot of years ago uh and it just shook me a lot so so i just took this uh little piece of of reality and just use it to to take it to 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 mexico to the to the more uh towny parts and the rural parts of, of Mexico, not the city, um, and tell the story of, of these uh, characters and these kind of people. So when you were writing it, um, you know, how, walk us through how you end up getting financing for filming and getting it distributed. Did, did it all just fall in place with you? Did it have did did that go through the film festival circuit as well? Well, uh, it it was weird because when I when I wrote it, I was I was living in in Spain, in fact, um, and of course it, it was a, a movie that, that it was thought to be shot in Mexico, so it was difficult to be financed in in Spain, especially for a first time director, but. At the same time, it, it was uh, the time in, in about eight years, ten years ago, when when the European and Spanish crisis uh, hit really hard. So at the end, I I think a lot of pieces came together. So I decided just to to come back to Mexico, and I was really lucky because at the the film institute. Um, Will they, they gave you some money first to to make the development of the film, and then the next year when we have the development of, of the film, they gave us uh, a little money to for the production. Nice. And in fact, um, we we were supposed to be getting more money for for uh, for uh, the rest of the financing, but we didn't get it. So at the end, we had to shut with just the, that little money that the Mexican Film Institute gave us. Wow, that's an amazing story. Uh, now, what is it like the film industry in Mexico? Is it you said there's money of it? I mean, there is money there for people who want to make films. How hard is it to get that money? Uh, you know, do you approach them with an idea with a script? Is it a, does it take a lot of time? Overall, I guess the question I'm trying to ask is for filmmakers in Mexico. How hard is it to make a movie um, compared to the United States, I guess? Okay. I think it's, it's, it's weird because I think they, they both are very different views of filmmaking because uh, now there's a, a bit more of, of uh, film industry here in Mexico and, and, and of commercial success of some films, but it's, it's, it's always been seen as more as a cultural thing. So, so the state will give you money for the, for doing that because it's it's supposed to be part of uh, arts and culture, yeah. and it's, it's important that the state should be taking care of that. Um, it's it's a mix of uh, I think we have a mix in the view of the European view of something more that way more cultural more arty and then something more uh commercial thing like in the states that of, co of course you you will have to finance the movie all by yourself because there there's no uh state to help you with, with in that in that sense yeah. so uh now in mexico it's it's quite easy let's say to 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 film because uh some of the good stuff that has happened in the I think about 10 years ago, it's that there's this new, there are, let's say, two ways that you can get financed by the state. One is uh, just, uh, they will give you direct money just to, to for the movie, especially uh, for little movies and for more arty movies, they will give you that, just that way, they will give you the money and if you lose it, 
nothing happens. Uh, if it's a huge success, great, that's amazing. Uh, but there's no commitment in that sense of, of to be a, a commercial success. Okay. Um, and there's the other way that is it's something that I think really works well. Uh, that it will be the money will come from the taxes. So you will give uh, the state your project, and they will see the projects, and they then they will find. Uh, companies that will say, okay, I have to pay this money on taxes to the state, but this little part of the money, instead of giving it to the state, I will give it to to make a film. Okay, okay, that makes so, sense. So, so I think it really and it works really well, and, and that's what has uh, done a lot for the film industry in Mexico uh, that has grown a lot, because of course for a company, it's the same. I mean, they, they anyway have to give the money away, uh, but they will say, okay, instead of just giving all to the state, I can give it also to a to a film, and that's good also for me because I I can put my name in the film also, so that's that's nice, and yeah. it has been working good so far. So with with Ricochet, you wrote it, you got the money, production. Were you surprised at the acclaim that the movie received once it got in front of an audience? Well, yeah, of course, because of course it's, it's also my first movie, so I really don't know how how to confront this thing of you doing a thing and then show it to a lot of people and what they, they will say. I mean, probably more experienced filmmakers can know what, the audience will think or what they would like. Uh, but in my case, of course, I, I just did it because I, I, I like the idea. I like the, the, the screenplay and, and, and I like it the way it was, it was shot. But I know it's not an easy movie because it's a slow movie. It's uh, it doesn't have any kind of, uh, uh, a lot of camera movements and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I was really happy to, especially, the, the first festival that we got into was uh, the Rome Film Festival. Mm -hmm. That uh, it's like it's like of course a, a good and a, a big festival. And from that point, more festivals came, and um, it's been great. I mean, the only bad part of it is in it was in 2020, and Cold it was Cold. a bit difficult to enjoy <laughs> to enjoy the festivals and to go. I mean, there's a lot of festivals that. Uh, I know the movie has been there, but I, 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 there's no way I could have gone because uh, yeah. there was uh, just online festival or there were no uh, guests for that year. Uh, but anyway, it's been great to, to see that uh, the, the people have liked it. Yeah. Now, uh, has Ricochet, you know, and all the acclaim that has gotten... Uh, has it changed uh, with you getting a lot more offers to direct, write? What effect has had Ricochet had on your career so far? To be honest, so far, not really much change uh, in terms of uh, offers or that kind of things. Uh, maybe I think because it, it, it's seen, of course, as a more arty film so it's not very used that uh, that we, probably you will get uh for that kind of arty film that somebody will came and tell you oh i have this other big commercial yeah. film that i want you to direct but the good thing is beginning to know more people of of the industry and and producers and and, and decision makers and that kind of things it's, it's always good uh to be more involved in in the in the industry now, for those who want to watch Ricochet uh, in the United States, uh, where can they watch Ricochet if they want to? I think at this moment, there's no way to watch it. Oh, yeah, we are. We don't have. Uh, we 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 in fact are just getting uh, a bit of offers for for distribution. One of them in the United States, but still we don't have closed any of those. So, so we still don't have any distribution in the United States. Okay. But well, hopefully, that's our goal. 
because just reading the reviews about this film and what it's about, I mean, there's two movies of yours that I'm just dying to see. And <laughs> I have no doubt once Ricochet, uh, with all the acclaim it's gone, once it, I mean, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to get picked up by a distributor. Uh, and when it does, and it does hit the United States, whether it's, you know, theatrical release or go straight to streaming, it's going to be a huge success uh, in that aspect. Uh, now, moving forward, you know, where does he, do you want to do a lot more writing? Do you want to, is directing your passion moving forward? Which of the two, uh, comp- you know, appeals to you m- the most? Well, uh, of course, directing, but uh, it's weird because um, it's not always easy that somebody else will write something that you will like or, or, or in, uh, otherwise you pay a screen, a screen player with it. It's difficult that somebody will write just for free something that you will like. So at this point, what I'm doing, in fact, one of the of the good things of COVID was that I had time for writing. So, so I, uh, I'm now developing two, two films that hopefully next year there's a way to begin to finance. Uh, but there's also, in fact, a, another project that is not uh, that I didn't write. Uh, it's from a friend that we are also trying to finance. So at the end, I think the more important part for me is directing. But of course, uh, I also like to think about what I like to direct. So, so, so sometimes I, ha- I need I need to write it. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm not always like to write because for me, it's very painful writing. Uh, it's, it's painful and it's it's hard for me, but I, it's something I need to do. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, you know, you're not the first person to tell that they wish they yeah. the script would just magically write itself and they can get straight to the, the directing part. Now, the yeah, ex- I think- uh, the no, exorcism it's a lot with uh, with writing directors that they will say that that probably they, they suffer a lot of writing but they will need to do that to make the movie done so yeah in fact we had Maria Gabriela Cardenas with us last Monday and she said the exact same oh. thing she, yeah. yeah she said <laughs> the exact same thing now the exorcism <laughs> of uh, Carmen Farias as you know there are a lot of movies out there that have the exorcism of, or yeah. the possession of. So yeah. you were given this movie to direct, The Exorcism of Carmen Farias. What did you want to do to say, there are so many movies out there with similar titles. What did you do to try to make that movie different and distinguish it from all the other movies with similar titles? Yeah, I'm... The first thing to say is that uh, that was not the title of the film. That was the title they put now on the film to make it more commercial. And and to be honest, I I, hate, I really hate it for that reason because yeah. because it sounds that is just some just another movie, just a another B movie of exorcism because mm-hmm. it's just a generic name for a film. Yeah. And I I really hate it that they have changed the name to that, but. Uh, that that's life yeah. uh, and talking about what what i wanted to do it's of course it wasn't my first approach to to the gender and I'm, I'm very respectful to the gender because it's if i think it's very difficult i think probably comedy and horror are the two more difficult uh, genres because they are very specific and 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 they have rules very determined rules and and timings and that kind of things so so uh, you need i think you need to be very re- respectful to that um but on the other hand maybe the good thing is the, uh, about not me being a really horror buff is that i could be a bit uh, i think a bit more free about thinking how to 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 see the things and 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 the thing of course that attracted me of the film was that uh First of all, that of course, uh, thrillers and horror movies, uh, they are very interesting uh, for experimenting in, in the visual sense and in the in the cinematic sense. So that was something that I really like to do. And the other thing is that the, mostly the film is just one character in one in one big house. So uh, it was a really challenge to 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 sustain a film 
with just one character and one place mm -hmm. for that time. So, so that that was the things that really attracted me to to make the film. Now, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of how to how to phrase this. Uh, did you do any kind of research into demonic possessions, exorcisms at all? Uh, when you were approached to direct this film to give it more authenticity, uh, what kind of preparation did you do when you got offered to direct the exorcism of Carmen Farias? Yeah, I mean, of course, I, I made some research uh, in, in, in both ways. First of all, of course, in, in the in the film history, in the film horror history, that, that I think that was also important, but then also in the let's say real exorcism and how they look and 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 how how it feels uh it was important also uh uh the screenwriter uh wrote it because because in the in the town he lives there's a lot of stories about mm -hmm. exorcism and that kind of thing so that was his inspiration also so of course i talked a lot uh with him about that kind of things to make a a little of inspiration and, and try to to figure out how to shoot the exorcism and then that that kind of things now uh we've read the uh i, I we read i read uh a little bit about the background of the movie and how it's a combination of different uh similar stories put into one story uh, like by the writer uh, Delano, by his grandmother. Are you familiar with these stories? If you are, what can is there anything more you can tell us about them and how these different stories were put together into one screenplay to make this single film? Well, I mean, I think uh, as you know, uh, in Mexico we we are uh, we have a, a lot of influence of, of the Catholic culture, mm -hmm. and of course all the things with exorcism and ghosts and these kind of things has to do a lot with with catholic culture and, and religion so i think everybody in mexico knows a story about a uh, haunted house or a ghost of, of exorcisms so i think that, that that's something you live with and and in the specific case of the film i i didn't know the 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 stories that that molo uh, had thought for the for the or have has, has experience or yeah. known but of course i i will talk to him and he will of course tell me about uh these stories about, about this this about his grandmother and the house of her of, of his grandmother and these kind of things so i think that's of course part of the inspiration and, and part of the cultural heritage that that will influence the, the film anyway yeah now it, we i also read that the film was actually shot in a say in a supposedly haunted house the location is that true what can you tell us about that well i don't know i mean i i'm not a, a very uh kind of uh you're esoteric a skeptic. Guy. you're a skeptic uh, yeah exactly but it's true that uh, it's weird because it's we shot in this very little town in 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 Mexico, that um, that for some reason the main influence is English. I think it, it, there was a mine, and there they the English arrived when when the part of the conquest and all these things, and they took the and they and they built that that um, that town. So it's weird because it has a lot of. Uh, the, the buildings will have a lot of influence of uh, English influence, Victorian influence, and then this house that is a, a kind of Victorian house in the middle of the woods, uh, in a town in Mexico, it's it's really strange. So that's the first thing that you will say. Mm, this is really weird. This big Victorian house in the middle uh -huh. of the woods in Mexico. And then when you came in, of course, there's there's, uh, there's a very old house anyway. It's uh, 200 years old. So so yes, it has this kind of strange thing. And in, there was one one room in particular that I really think has this very strange energy. Okay. I mean, I can I can tell you that I don't I'm not I don't I really don't believe too much in that kind of of things. 
But it's true. I mean, nobody wanted to be alone in that room for too much time. I mean, even myself, I will come in and say, okay, nah, that's it, and go out. <laughs> when we were filming, it was different because there's a lot of people and movement, and that was fine. But coming in alone, it was something weird in that room. That's true. <laughs> Just a weird feel about it. How long did the shooting yeah, take exactly. for, for the exorcism of Carmen? It was uh, seven <clears throat> weeks. Six weeks? Seven weeks. Wow. Uh, compared to a lot of other horror movies, that's pretty long time. Uh, you know, I mean, I've heard of, you know, other horror movies being done in 10, 21 days. What took seven weeks uh, uh, to shoot that movie? I think because uh, of the preparation that they, the, the house needed and the preparation that some of the uh, physical effects will be needed to do. And, and, and also, to be honest, because the production will give us time to work calmly. We were, we were never running during the seven weeks. Uh, we were working really well. We, we never did overtimes and that kind of thing. So I, I think I really appreciate that from the production that they will give us a bit more time because as you know always there's rushing and you don't have always the time you wanted to do that but in 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 the case of this in this film honestly i i really i really i'm really thankful to the production that they will give us time to do it and that is very rare because i you know i've talked to a lot of american filmmakers and yeah. it's always about time and money you know uh do always. it as quickly as possible as cheaply as possible, Cheap as possible. yeah definitely, definitely. now I, uh, the good part is that because also because there was mostly one character in one place that part was not that too expensive let's say to do it so i think we could compensate with time yeah yeah now uh having you know worked in the united states and mexico do you want to continue to make movies and shooting them in mexico do you want to come and do more in the united states what are your feelings about that i uh, my feelings is exactly the same as in with with generous i in any place in the world that there's something good to be to be done i'm open uh, I, I i'm really open of course uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not stupid. I know that it, it, doing a movie in the United States opens you a lot of, uh, uh, of arms in the rest of the world and, and to the industry. Uh, that, that's, of course, uh, something that's true. But, um, but at the end, what I'm really interested in is in, in, a good, in good projects. Where, where they can come from Vietnam. I, I don't care. I mean, that, that just, just that it's a, it's a good project. Uh, but, of course, I happy so if somebody will will offer me a good project in the united states i, I will be really happy about it <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about the uh, differences like we just talked about here in the u.s uh product i mean the it's so complicated production companies distributors yeah. producers and it's rush yeah. do it as cheaply as possible from what you're describing it's a little bit more laid back in mexico uh, you know, how, how do you think you would react on having to do, let's say, you know, you're offered to do a, a full featured film here in the United States with all the pressure, all the rushing. Do you think that would affect uh, your ability as an artist to do the best work you can possibly do? That's I think that's the toughest question, because as you say, it, it's very different because sometimes of course, you will say, yeah, in Mexico, it's a little easier because uh, there's a lot of uh, films and, and help from the state, and that's good. But also, at the same time, it's not that they will give you a lot of money. It's, uh, to be honest, it's very little money that they will give you. And that's also a problem because at some point, there's like a ceiling and yeah. there's no big Mexican movies because there's something that they will just get in the, that top and there's nothing to go up and yeah. it's difficult also because of language so, and, and that kind of thing. But then in the United States, of course, you will have possibly the, the biggest production uh, that you can have. But then also the pressure is really big because it comes from 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 investment money, from mm -hmm. people that really that wants their money back. So the pressure is it's tough in that sense. So, so I really don't know. I, I think I, I, sh I have to be in that position. Probably with the with the 
with the horror movie, uh, I did. I was some kind in the middle of it because at the end I was working for a, let's say, a studio or another production company that, of course, they will put some kind of pressure to me about how the movie should look like, and of course they want to make uh, money of the movie mm -hmm. because uh, not uh, not all the money was come from the state. There was also private in investment in the in the film, so so of course they want them, their money back, uh, but. I think the pressure will never be the same as in a in a big studio in the United States. That yeah. that must be that must be really tough. And I really respect the uh, the studio directors in the in Hollywood because the, uh, the pressure is it must be really tough. And and there's a lot of decision makers because of course you want the best for the film, but sometimes you are not the the last one to decide stuff. Yeah. Not about editing, about how it's going to to. The name of the film you don't decide it, for example. That is, <laughs> uh, so it, it's tough. Uh, I mean, and, and and I understand there's a lot of, for example, of uh, of big European directors that that have been offered to make movies in the United States and they have refused. For example, Almodovar, and because they don't want that pressure and they don't want to to deliver that kind of uh, decision making to other people. They want to make decisions themselves always. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, trust so me, it's tough. I get it's it. Really tough. Yeah, it is really, really tough. We're almost out of time. Uh, I just want to ask you uh, as a final question, uh, what's in the works for you right now? Are you currently working on anything, writing, directing? Are you about to start directing? What's in the works for you? Uh, I'm at this point, uh, it, it's been a really tough year, uh, as you know, for everybody, everybody uh, yeah. uh, and in, especially in, in the film industry, it's been really tough in, in every place in the world. So at this, at this time, Alice in Mexico is coming to recover a little by little. Uh, I'm at this moment uh, working on commercials that it's mainly what, what give, gives me, give me the food on my plate every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but as I told you before, the good, the only, I think one of the good things about, about COVID was uh, that I had the chance to, to write because I could not work, I could not do anything else. So the only thing I could do was, was writing. And at this point, I have two films that I, I'm trying for next year to, to get them financed. As you know, uh, filmmaking, it's something in a slow process. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so hopefully next year I can start financing them, and then two years from now I could be shooting them. That's awesome. At least one, you know, maybe maybe not the both of them. That's very <laughs> that's very good thinking. But uh, at least one of them, I, I I hope. That's awesome. I hope so too, Rodrigo. Thank you. This has been a fascinating hour. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, uh, sharing all your VFX information and just enticing us even more as we wait for Ricochet and the exorcism of Carmen Farias to be released in the United States. Hopefully that will happen very, very soon. I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Uh, you're a very smart man. You're talented. Thank you so much. Any final thoughts you want to share with our audience? Just uh, thank you a lot for this, for this opportunity. It's always, I think, one of the, the best things about filmmaking and, and art in general, I think, is to be able to share what what you think of the world and what your thoughts about the world are. And and, and the best part for, for, I think, for directors, at least for me, it's what other people have to say about your work. Because sometimes uh, we think we are smart, but, but sometimes people is smarter. And sometimes it, it's happened to me that people will tell me stuff about the films that is even better or greater than what I thought the, the mm -hmm. film that I was doing was. And, and, and I was supposed to be the creator of the film, but no, that may, sometimes people say best things on smarter things of, of, of yours, of your things. And, and you learn from that. And that's, that's amazing. And I really, that's the thing I love. So I really, uh, I'm really grateful for you for inviting me and, and having this, this talk. It was, it was a really pleasure. It was my pleasure. And the whole thing about people giving you new insight, that's the great thing about films and especially yes. of a story that is open to interpretation and to hear all the different ways that people interpret your writing, your work. I think yes. that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I love that part. 
Rodrigo, thank you so much again. I want to thank all of our audience for tuning in tonight. This has been a fascinating conversation. Everybody stay safe. And until next time, on behalf of Rodrigo and myself, stay walking. Good night.